Hello and welcome back to Just Ride Bikes. I hope you're well and enjoying life wherever you are. Now today I want to talk to you about a new gravel bike, a new Cannondale Topstone gravel bike to be precise. They launched a new bike today and about two weeks ago I got the chance to see the bike in the flesh and shoot some exclusive footage to share with you today and all the details and changes of this new bike over the old model it replaces. What I haven't done yet is ride the bike so I can't talk to you about how it performs and handles, but hopefully I get a chance to ride one fairly soon. And you can help that happen by subscribing to the channel by hitting that red button down below. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive in and take a closer look. So Topstone, if you're not familiar with this bike, is the company's go-to gravel adventure bike packing option. So think big tire clearance, relaxed geometry over the road bikes and lots of accessory mounts for bags and bottles and other stuff you need to carry on a bike packing adventure. It first launched back in 2018 as an alloy bike and then a year later it became a carbon bike with the kingpin rear suspension, more on that later. A year after that they added the lefty suspension fork, very distinctive left side only fork and this year They've updated it, so not a major change. It looks very similar to the old bike, but some very useful, some very worthwhile updates, and some updates I think you'll definitely like. And some of the changes clearly show the company was listening to your feedback, or shall we say complaints, around the old bike. So now the new bike has a threaded bottom bracket, just like we saw on the Synapse Endurance bike earlier this year. And they've also ditched the AI asymmetric rear end, so you can fit a regular rear wheel without re-ditching it. So two big thumbs up from me and from all of you on the changes to the new bike. To look at the new bike compared to the old bike, it does look very similar. Similar tube profiles, we have the same drop rear stays and a kingpin rear suspension where they have a through axle pivot at the seat tube for the rear stays to connect to, more on that in a moment. But then we have dropped rear stays. So on the previous bike, to ensure adequate tire clearance for a bike of the genre, they went with an offset rear end. They've done it before on their cross bikes and it basically offsets the rear wheel and the drivetrain by six millimeters. So you had to get a rear wheel dish, which meant you couldn't swap in or out another wheel without redishing that wheel. But now they've gone to a drop rear stay, like we've seen on many bikes since the open up back in 2015. And those drop rear stays give the necessary tire clearance without needing that offset rear end. So a rigging move by Candel. So talking of tire clearance, the bike will easily take a 45 millimeter wide tire on a 700C rim or a 650B by 2.1 inch mountain bike tire if you prefer. And the company is offering specs with both big wheels and small wheels depending on your preference. A redefining really feature of the old top zone carbon and carried over to the new model with a few refinements to make it lighter is a kingpin rear suspension. Now lots of gravel bike manufacturers trying to offer more comfort from their bikes and we're seeing different versions of suspension with actual shocks and springs or just bendy carbon in different places. And the Kingpin is a through axle pivot on a seat tube connecting the rear stays which allows a bigger range of flex along the chain stays, the seat stays and the seat tube and the seat post. And it claims you get up to 10 mil of rear wheel travel and 30 mil at the saddle. And there are two clear benefits from this design, this system, based on my testing of the old bike. And firstly, it's better seated comfort and is akin to riding that redshift suspension stem I had in my Fairlight last year. So more comfort in a saddle, so a smooth ride. But then allowing the rear wheel to move, get more traction and more control on rough surfaces, so washboard gravel or roots and rocks. So not only more comfort, but more control and traction as well, which you don't get with a suspension seat post. And it's not dissimilar to that BMC Unrestricted, which has a soft tail rear end with an elastomer between the rear stays and a seat tube. So a very similar design. There aren't many companies doing this sort of soft tail approach. We've had soft tails on mountain bikes and road bikes in the past from the likes of Moots. But I do expect to see more bike brands doing this in the gravel sector because it's a really neat way of adding comfort and suspension without extra weight and complexity. And the company has managed to find 100 grams of saving in the kingpin itself by switching from a bearing to a bushing, which they also claim lasts for years and doesn't need any servicing or maintenance. Now the system can't be tuned, it's not suspension, you can't alter rebound or compression, it is fixed and the amount of bending force you get at the rear stays and comfort in the saddle will depend on how hard you hit an impact, so root, rock or curb, and also rider weight as well. 
And if all this talk of flexing carbon fiber is scary as hell and know where you're coming from, then fear not. Companies like Candel and many others have been doing flexing carbon rear stays on full suspension mountain bikes for many, many years, going back 10, 15 years. And increasingly on road bikes, on endurance road bikes, and now it seems gravel bikes as well. And you have a change on the new bike, and it's a massive change and a seismic U-turn for the company that pioneered the press fit bottom bracket is we now have a threaded bottom bracket on a new gravel bike. And it follows in the footsteps of the Synapse Endurance road bike I reviewed earlier this year, link down below in case you missed it. So it can now, now switching from press fit to threaded on all its bikes. Well, that remains to be seen. It makes sense on an endurance bike and definitely a gravel bike for low maintenance or easy maintenance out in the field. But will they do the same on their updated System 6 and Super 6 whenever they come out? That remains to be seen. I doubt it somehow where performance is the main criteria for those road race bikes. But for endurance and gravel, it makes a lot of sense. So big thumbs up, Candel. Nice work. And another feature carried over from the Synapse, which some of you may or may not like, but it is optional on this bike at least, is the Smart Sense technology. An integrated battery powering a radar and front and rear daytime running lights. But the good news, if you aren't a fan of Smart Sense, and from the comments on that Synapse review, I know lots of you aren't, that Smart Sense only comes on the top end models and is optional on the lower models. So Candale shared two models for me to film for this video. There's a bright yellow one with a lefty suspension fork on, which looks amazing, fast and ready for action. And then more of a adventure bike packing setup with a front and rear bag. And here we can see they've definitely addressed or listened to some of the feedback from the Synapse in how do you fit bags when you have a radar, a rear light and a front light in the way. What you do is use a GoPro extended bracket and move the front light down and that rear light away so you can fit a big saddle bag or a handlebar bag. So you still get the benefits of the radar and the front and rear daytime lights, but you have a front and rear bag fitted. The only question mark I do have around the system is whether you can easily fit a big kind of Apidura out kit seat pack to the saddle and still have that radar on or whether you have to put it down below the seat pack. So that's definitely a question mark, but hopefully I get a chance to find out fairly soon. We'll get my hands on one and test it with different bags and different configurations to see how it works here in the real world. Okay, now you know all the details and changes to the brand new Topstone Carbon. Let's talk money and components available. And here in the UK at least, there'll be six models to choose from, costing from £2,800 and going all the way to £8,000. I won't go through details of every single bike. Instead, check the website for your region and see what they're offering where you live. But here are some highlights from the UK range. So at the top, we have the One RLE with a SRAM Force ETAP group set, hologram 22 carbon wheels, and a Smart Sense light and radar setup, and 45 mil wide Riddler tires. Then for four and a half thousand pounds, the two lefty gets a Shimano GRX 800 slash 600 group set with WTB Rattler tires on WTB KOM wheels, and of course the lefty suspension fork. The cheaper model for 2,800 pounds gets a Shimano GRX 600 straight 400 group set with 45 mil Riddler tires and a smart sense ready. So there we are then, the brand new Candel Top Zone Carbon and all the prices and details on this all new bike. And for me, it now looks like a really sensible, really strong choice in the all round, but definitely fast gravel bike sector with a side order of adventure and bike packing. Because where the press fit bottom bracket but more for me, personally, the AI offset rear end really put me off this bike being a strong choice in the market. Now we're a threaded bottom bracket and a regular conventional rear end, so any rear wheel will go in there with no problems. We now have a really strong choice in the very competitive gravel bike market. And the bike definitely looks like it's fast and efficient on the road, but very smooth and capable off-road as well. And I can't wait to see how it performs with a review coming up fairly soon, hopefully. Anyway, let me know what you think of the new bike by leaving a comment down below. Is it a bike that floats your boat or is there something else that you think does a better job of offering this combination of speed and off-road capability in the marketplace right now? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. And if you want to see some of the best gravel bikes available right now, then do check this video right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.